Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Joseph's Church. Please stand as we pray together number 403. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. All on earth with angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let us together turn to our Savior Jesus Christ, love incarnate, who has conquered the grave. Let us then turn to our Savior in our hearts, and as we first call to mind our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and, falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I am myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, Whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done wondrous deeds his right hand has won victory for him his holy arm the Lord has revealed to the nations his sin has made his salvation known in the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice he has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness 
toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Poetry usually isn't my cup of tea, but I'd like to share with you a part of a poem that was written by a friend of mine some time ago. It's entitled, Holy Love, 
And I think in a, a really special way, it speaks to the love of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who herself was a channel, a vessel of God's amazing love for others. Holy love is never lusterless. Its light will illumine all darkness, radiating peace, transcends ego. Inflamed by the fire of God's love, purified like gold in his furnace. No will unsubmitted to fiat, no mantle worn warmer than Mary's, woven virginal wool from the lamb. Pure love calls all out of the darkness. At first light of new springtime's dawning, as the time for his coming draws near. Love. Scripture readings today are just filled with this theme over and over and over again in different ways, divine love. And in a very focused way, we hear these very precious lines from 1 John today. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. And that got me thinking, what is really love? And St. John tells us that it's not anything that we can do. Rather, it all starts with God, who is love himself. And it flows out from there. Love begins with God. Because God is, in fact, love. St. John makes that point so very clear. Isn't that an interesting insight? God is love. Love is God. Wherever real love is found, God is found. And wherever God is, love must also be. And because he is love, which doesn't just stay, you know, locked away within itself or kind of hiding, hanging out and doing its own thing, it goes out of itself. So God, who is love, goes out of himself and he comes to us in living human flesh to save us from sin because he loves us. What this means then, as St. John shows us, is what love itself then consists of, which is sacrifice. Perfectly revealed in the life of Jesus, I mean the greatest sacrifice that could ever be offered, the God-man on the cross. And so those who seek to love really as God loves necessarily then must include sacrificing, to sacrifice. If you want a good measure of how much you really love someone, ask yourself the question, how much am I willing to sacrifice for them? We say we love tacos. Really? You're going to lay down your life for Taco Bell? Doubt it. How about your children or your spouse? Are you willing to sacrifice for them in such a heroic way? That question comes a lot more into focus, doesn't it? Laying down one's life for one's friends. Jesus says it himself. No greater love has another than this. Certainly, Mary, the mother of Jesus, really possessed this deep sacrificial love in her own life. You know, she said yes to God's will that completely like changed her life. Any plans that she had, mm, sacrificing self-will can be so hard, can it? We want our way. We want it when we want it, as we want it, not as we don't want it. The sacrifice is to love. And she said yes to God's will in this sacrificing love for God. And she was blessed for it because she chose the better part. Because God's will can only be love and for love and therefore for good. That fiat 
that Latin word for yes that she first uttered when the Archangel Gabriel came and invited her into this mystery of being the mother of the Savior. That wasn't a once and done deal, was it? It was a yes she had to keep coming back to again and again and again. And such is the nature of sacrificial love, real love. It's again and again and again and again we have to make the decision. Do I put myself first? Do I put God first? Do I live for others or do I live for myself? Her humble surrender was a pattern for her life. And ultimately, that's meant to be a pattern for our lives as well as disciples of Jesus. A surrendered love, let's call it. Surrendered to the Father's will and nothing else. In other words, Mary shows us what it really means to love like God. You know, I don't know on her own effort of her own accord, whether she would have ever been able to do all that God asked of her, for her good and for ours, to raise this child unlike any other ever, to see him suffer and die before her very eyes, to hope beyond hope that the grave was not the end of her son, But Mary's love was not her own. It was God living within her that enabled her to be so heroic and so loving. Because he loved her first, and Mary knew that at the very, very bottom of her heart, that God loved her, she was able to make a response of love herself in such a powerful way. And my friends, this is how we're going to love if we're going to love at all. Not by mustering up our own efforts just to get enough and willing it, but truly by emptying ourselves out to let God's love flood us and fill us to overflowing so we can really be everything we hope and believe to be. To be the embodiment of love, God dwelling in us. In a similar way, I believe that the love of all mothers is a participation necessarily in God's divine love. Certainly, the sacrificial nature of a mother's love is very godlike indeed. Just as Mary laid aside her will to serve the Heavenly Father, so mothers. You know, they lay down their lives and their wills again and again and again to love their children. Many sacrifices they have offered for us throughout their lives. True motherhood is a wholehearted response to God's divine love, who has embraced these mothers first and then have loved us first even before we knew what love was. And so as children of both our earthly parents and of God, we're called to respond to that love, to receive it and then ourselves participate in it and to share it openly. And we do that by laying aside self and seeking to love and serve others by loving and serving God. To love another, first, you must receive. Our very lives show that, don't they? Our mothers, our fathers loved us again before we even knew how to mention the word love. And we receive that love. And then we live that love. And as our Heavenly Mother watches over us from heaven, she wants to always lead us to her Son. That's what love does. It begets more love. And it wants to lead others to more love. That's what our Blessed Mother does. Her response to God's divine love, her yes, led her to give birth to love incarnate, and it changed human history forever. And I can tell you, when you really seek to love another person, you can change their lives for the better. And the more unconditional the love, the more it can radically transform somebody. 
Just as God's perfect love has saved us from eternal separation from him, it's changed our entire universal, eternal destiny. And continuing her motherly role from heaven, Mary still seeks for her son's divine love to be begotten within each one of us so that we in turn can be that love in Christ for the world. God bless you. Friends, let us now together stand and we profess the Nicene Creed and pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As sisters and brothers of the risen Lord, as children of our Blessed Mother, we come to God our Father with our prayers and petitions. For the successor of Peter, for all the shepherds of the church, that they may be ready to welcome the action of the Holy Spirit wherever he chooses to pour himself out for the glory of the Father. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that in every nation there may be statesmen and leaders who fear God and act uprightly, making themselves acceptable to him as Cornelius once did. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand how powerless we are to choose God unless he first chooses us and appoints us to bear fruit, and that we may follow Jesus with humility and gratitude for, his, for this surpassing grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of prayer today in their struggles and sufferings, that our love may be active in prayer for them, and that God, who is love, may reach out to them and help them with great power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, the people of God, may learn how to love others more fully, following the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass today, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, and for the repose of the soul of Francis Kerr, and for all of the intentions in our prayer basket, as well as those we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, hear the prayers we make through the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant what we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is risen Lord forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray number 400. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to these mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. And, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. i 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The People's Antiphon, number 413. with 
has proclaimed his gracious gift, life eternal for all who believe. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to Let us pray.
Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our announcements. Please note that this Thursday, the 40th day of Easter, is the Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord, a holy day of obligation. The Vigil Mass will take place Wednesday evening, May 12th at 7 p.m., and then Masses on Thursday itself will be at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. There will be no scheduled confessions or 6.15 evening Mass this Thursday. Also, please note that the Wild Goose Bible Study will be held on Tuesday, May 11th, this week, instead of Wednesday, for those who can make it. Same time, same place. Finally, as this is Mother's Day weekend, I'd like to offer a special blessing for those mothers here present today. So if you would please stand. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth, and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Would everyone please stand? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Saint Joseph. Our closing hymn, number 415. Let